Hiya, hiya, hiya. So, it's me again. And I thought today would be the perfect time for me to once again record another super, ultra, mega, giga, comprehensive guide. Um, today, I'm going to be covering every single thing that you need to know about San Comerci or Comerci or whatever you want to call it. Um, whether it be going through the pre-quests and unlocking the actual party quest, um, sweet water equips, and transposing. Um, there is a little bit of nuance to Comerci, especially nowadays with the, you know, the changing landscape of equips and what is considered to be the best within a reasonable amount of time. So there are situations where, um, you know, sometimes you do want to ignore Comerci. Um, and sometimes where Comerci might actually be worth your time. So I'm going to be covering all of it here, whether it's worth your time, what to do in Comerci, and what it's all about. Um, like all of my other videos, it's going to be a little detail, but I'm going to try to keep the intro and the video straight to the point and concise. Um, so remember to like, comment, and sub, or I will literally eat your mesos faster than Star Forcing does. And without further ado, let's get into it. So, I am now endgame, and the first question that you would naturally ask when starting Comerci is, well, obviously, how do I get started? Um, so obviously there is a prequest to San Comerci, Comerci, whatever it is. Um, I can only do this once, so I'm going to do it very slowly, because I want to do it on this character specifically. Um, so you're going to want to go into your quest tab, and you're going to want to look for a level 150, 145, 140 quest. Uh, Nine Arts Call, Commercial Republic. You do that and you follow along. Um, kind of straightforward. Just keep going with the quest until you get to. Until you get to the uh, the main the main city. So just a bunch of dialogue. If you don't really care for it, if you want to read it, go ahead. Um, the purpose of this video is obviously to get you to, um, you know, get yourself all set up with Comerci if that's what you're looking to do. So just more dialogue to skip. After you talk to Parbel, you kind of end up on this small little island. And then after that, you end up on this little island, so you want to follow Mayor Barry's quests. Keep going along with him, then he's going to tell you to take out a couple of gray tomcats, and then he's going to tell you to take out some calico timcats after this. So we can probably just fast forward through this until I'm done. All right, there you go. So that's 100 gray tomcats. Now I will say this now. Any mob that you fight in Comerci is extremely weak. You could literally sneeze on any mob in Comerci and they will just they they will they will they will be buried 6 feet under in game, obviously. Um so any sort of deployable that you have is super useful in Comerci for killing things and getting rid of things faster, so Definitely use your summons to the best of your abilities here because, yeah, the spawns here are kind of suck. So, once again, like I said, after you finish that first quest, he's going to give you another one where instead of taking out the Tomcats, you take out the Timcats. Um, so, just do another, another session of that, and we'll just fast forward through this. All right, 
Alright, there you go. So that's 100 Calico Tim Cats. Um, fairly straightforward for the first two quests. So after this, I'm pretty sure is where you defend that guy. Yeah, and you want to make sure that you're telling the mayor the truth. So when you get to that dialogue option that I just passed, you want to make sure that you're telling them the truth. Or else you won't be able to progress in the uh, uh, in the story. So just be careful when you uh, when you get to there. Then you move to the right, and then you're going to defend Leon Daniela. Just take out the cats. Once again, talk to Daniela. Keep it rolling. And then he's going to tell you to go to the actual San Camerchi. That's just the uh, the town of Barry, if you will. What is, it, what is it actually called? Yeah, it's literally just called Barry. So... When you move to the right, and you keep moving to the right, and you just ignore all of these, and you keep moving to the right. Um, this is where you actually run into San Camerchi. Now, if all you care about is the Sweetwater Equips, um, and the party quests and all that, then you can just stop here and you're done. Um, you pretty much... Um, actually, you do have one other prequest that you have to do, but it's more intertwined with the actual party quest itself. Rather than more of an actual prequest, um, it's more of like a tutorial. Um, so once you're here, you can pretty much stop. You don't have to uh, do any more. If you do want to continue with the rest of the quest line, um, it is okay because it does give you starter equips. So if you're doing this right when you start your character and you need starter equips, it's fine because you get starter equips and you get a 100% epic potential scroll at the end. Um, of the storyline takes like 45 minutes to an hour to do um, would I recommend it personally not you, you know how I am with efficiency I personally would not recommend going through with the storyline but if you absolutely want to see it that's fine um, so now that you're in San Camerchi you want to be looking for a quest in your quest tab um, get rich quick, level 140, and it's just going to be called Kamurchi. So this is the quest that you're going to need to do to unlock the party quest and have access to your Sweetwater equips. Um, but before I continue with that, uh, I should probably mention that you cannot teleport to Kamurchi, uh, with a hyper teleport rock. Um, so let's say you wanted to teleport to Kamurchi. If I try to teleport in, you see that you can't do it. So if you want a quick way to get to San Camerchi, you want to make sure that you're opening up your Maple Guide tab, looking for Camerchi in the Town section, and just clicking there, and this will take you to Camerchi. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, I'm going to accept the Get Rich Quick quest, and I'm going to explain everything about voyages, um, getting Denaro, upgrading your ship, so on and so forth. And what you should be doing to optimize the amount of denaro that you're getting per day. Alright. So, we accept Get Rich Quick. And once you accept the quest, you're going to want to go inward and talk to Maestra. I don't know how to pronounce that name. I'm going to say it's Maestra. So you're going to talk to her. And you're going to go along with the quest. You want to be rich, right? Yes. Um, so you keep going along with it. Um, so she opens your ship UI. Um, so this is very important. Um, or at least kind of. Um, so the ship... Um, there's a couple things about the UI. There's the level, which... As you do more voyages, you get XP to level up your ship. Um, and then once you get XP and you get this to level 10, then you can level up your ship. Um, I'll mention what the leveling up of the ship does in just a second, because I want to explain energy first. 
Now, energy is what you need to do to go on to voyages. Now, depending on where you go to voyages, you'll uh, it'll consume a different amount of energy, and energy replenishes each day, so you can only do a certain number of voyages per day. So, for example, um, if I were to do one specific region that consumes 10 energy, for example, um, that's a spoiler, by the way, if you go into one region that consumes 10 energy, then you can do 10 runs of that region per day, um, and then you have to wait for reset. Um, now, once you get your ship to level 10, you can level it up. Um, you can only level up your ship twice. There is the cargo skiff, there is the sailboat, and then there is the dreadnought. Now, when you get your ship to level 10 and upgrade your ship to a sailboat, and then get your ship from level 1 to level 10 again when you're on a sailboat to a dreadnought, um, you get different effects for your ship. So... Um, when you level up your ship to a Dreadnought, you'll have 120 energy instead of 100 energy. Now, there are different use cases for, you know, getting a Dreadnought or whether it's actually worth your time. But once again, I'll get into that in just a second. So, um, for now, we'll continue with the quest line. Bon Voyage 1, she's going to send you on a trip. Um, she just wants you to click the blue region, right? Okay, I have to leave my party. My apologies. Okay. There you go. So, fairly straightforward. Just going to send you on a voyage. And you kind of do nothing for five seconds. Because, yeah, this is cool. Okay, so once you get through with whatever that was. And the quest is done. And then you do it again. Um, now you'll have the, I guess we'll call it the cargo menu or whatever you're, you know, you're commercing and commerci in commerci. Um, so another benefit of the dreadnought, which I couldn't cover because I didn't even explain the, you know, um, the inventory, if you will, is that with a normal boat, you'll only be able to carry four items, which will only profit you. Uh, two commerci denaros for every run that you do. Um, but if you upgrade to a dreadnought, you can carry up to six items, which will increase your income from two denaro every run to three. So uh, this this will be important as to when I cover the maximum denaro that you can make in a day, uh, considering you know, I'm um, considering what level your ship is. Um, so once again, more just sitting around doing nothing. Um, now it'll show you what your income is as you finish. Um, the bonus income will usually always be one, or it should always be one, because I don't suggest that you do the other voyages where the income is greater than one, or the bonus income is greater than one. Um, so just keep going along with it. This is still just the more the tutorial. So you're going to keep going to Dolch. And you're going to keep putting your, um, you know, your cargo in, if you will. Because obviously you want to profit. You don't want to just put in nothing and make nothing from your runs. You want to make sure that you're always maxing out on the amount of things that you can buy. Um, and this time, a monster will spawn. Just take it out. Fairly simple. Um, and complete the quest. Alright. And now... 10 trades for Luna, you're going to ignore that quest. So after you finish the tutorial, now you want to do one thing and one thing only. You want to unlock the Herb Town region um, for your voyages. The reason why you want to do this is so that you can actually unlock the Merchant Union trade location. This is the actual Comerci Party quest that you can do in conjunction with the solo voyages. No matter what your energy is. So even if your energy is zero, you can do the union uh, trade, which gets you even more denaro a day. Um, so what begs the, uh, now it begs the question, how do I unlock Herb Town? So you're going to hover the other regions and you're going to see the prerequisites and what it takes to unlock that specific region. So you'll notice um, in that little UI, there's like a box um, or that little, you know, label that says uh, voyage requirements. 
take five trade voyages to Dolch and zero Denaro. So obviously they're not going to make you pay anything to unlock this region. And Dolch is the region in the middle. So Dolch takes 10 energy. Um, so obviously you're going to have to spend two or 20 energy, two runs worth of energy to unlock Luna. Um, you can also see how many voyages you've completed in a specific region under the monsters label, if you will. It says three voyages completed. So I only need to, I only need to complete two more voyages to unlock Luna. And then once I unlock Luna, I need to unlock Rosa. And in order to unlock Rosa, I need to take five trade voyages to Luna, which obviously we need to unlock that first. And I need to pay 10 dinaros. Yet again, wavering that fee is totally fine. It's totally worth your time because you'll make that back within an instant. And then after you unlock Rosa, you're going to need to unlock Herbtown by taking five voyages to Rosa and 20 dinaros. So let's start from the beginning. Um, start with Dolch. Do two more runs so that I can unlock Luna and then progress my way forward. So we'll kind of just speed run through this. Um... Fast forward, if you will, or whatever it may be, whatever you want to call it. Okay, and then we go with the second run, get your earnings. All right, there you go. Um, now note, um, I should probably say this, stop the fast forward. Uh, future me um, So every region has their own set of spawns uh, Dolch for example only has one ocean reef runner one set of pirates and then one set of harps So Dolch is one of the fastest regions to complete um, Obviously it being the easiest region and as you go further it becomes more and more difficult to progress um, in the later regions, though, there will be an instance where you'll have to fight unlimited mobs. So if you do run out of time in that specific instance where you cannot, um, you know, kill all of the mobs, quote unquote, in question be because they're unlimited, um, that's fine. Don't worry about that. Um, that's just normal. You you're meant to fail those kinds of instances anyways. So now that you can see, I've completed five voyages in Dolch. Um, so now I just want to click Luna and it'll ask me to unlock the Voyage License. Obviously you want to do that because it costs nothing, you know, why not, right? So now obviously you want to be progressing towards Rosa, so now you got to be doing Luna. So five runs of this. Keep loading up your ship. And blasting off away. So this uh, this specific region will have a coral reef runner, an ocean reef runner, um, I think a few sets of uh, of pirates and harps, and then one set of unlimited spawns. So this is what the unlimited spawn looks like. Um, there's nothing that you can really do about this. You kind of just have to wait until the timer runs out. And it's personally why I don't like any regions as Dolch, um, because they're just super, super super time consuming especially if you're doing you know eight of these runs a day um it's not something i would personally suggest but once again i'll cover the optimal routes um after i after i you know say what i need to say about unlocking voyages and getting all the way to herb town okay so that's that so once again start trade enter trade Claim your earnings. Continue on Luna. Put your two soap in. And we should probably fast forward from this point.
Okay, that's another run done. Once again, go through the whole shenanigans and start another run in Luna, not Dolch. Yeah, like as you can tell, like my voyage times for Luna is like a minute and seven seconds, but my runs for Dolch is like 20 something seconds. Like it's just such a big difference between the two regions. And honestly, why I favor one over the other. Alright, that should be another run done. And now my income has increased to 4 because now I can fit more items on my ship. That happens when you after you get your first level on your ship. Um, so you'll notice that you can only start with 2, but it, it goes up eventually. So one more run to Luna, and then... And then we're done with this section. Okay, so there you go. That's five runs to Luna. Um, so you can see it down there. Once again, five voyages completed. Um, so now you can open Rosa. Um, Rosa is going to take 15 energy, and obviously you need to finish another um, five more uh, voyages in order to get all the way to Herbtown to unlock that. And once you unlock that and repeat the same process for this, you're done. Um, for the sake of this video, I won't need to do it um, because personally, I don't feel the need. Uh, I think I think I've already demonstrated a good showcase. Once again, trying to keep this concise. Um, so once you do unlock that and you do unlock your Union Trade location, um, you'll need a party of three to actually do the Union Trade, um, and you can do three runs of the Union Trade per day. Um, each taking you to a random location between Goldway, uh, Hunter's Way, or uh, Silkway. Um, for making Denaro, Goldway is the best, then Hunter's Way, and then Silkway. Um, also, depending on your contribution in the um, Merchant Union Trade or Commerci PQ or whatever you want to call it, depending on your contribution and how many mobs you kill or how much damage you did to the bosses, um, puts you in a specific rank, and depending on, on what rank you placed in in the party, gives you more denaros. So for example, if we did Goldway, my base income is 6, and if I ranked first in the party, I get an extra 3 denaro, so I get 9 denaro. If I place second, I get 8, and if I place third, I get 7. Um, so, without upgrading your ship... Um, your max income can be roughly around uh, 64, or sorry, no. Um, your max income is 34 plus 27, so it's around 61 dinaros per day. And personally, I don't suggest that you do the maximum uh, income route, because the maximum income route revolves around doing a couple runs from rosa and luna respectively before you do the rest of the runs in dolch um, and as you can tell it's much more time consuming and considering this is a daily time is of the essence considering that arcane dailies and other dailies um you know take a higher priority over something like Comerci. 
Um, so personally, what I would suggest is do 10 runs of Dolch, get your 30 Denaro and call it a day. Um, and then do your Merchant Union trade locations and get done with it within like 5 or 10 minutes. Um, because it still replicates majority of the Denaro that you could make otherwise. Um, and, you know, it saves you a metric ton of time, which could be used towards, you know, other things like gathering nodes, gathering arcane symbols, so on and so forth. Um, now, if you do upgrade your ship, which you can find in the vessel menu on your equip tab, by the way. So you can see that my ship is leveled up, but that's besides the point. So if you do get your ship up to a dreadnought, you get 120 energy and you can store more uh, cargo. So if you upgrade your ship, then the maximum income that you can get is actually from Dolch. You do 12 runs of Dolch and you max out on Kamurchi Soap every time. Um, so that increases your um, maximum income to, um, instead of 61, to um, 48 plus 27, which is 75. Um, so is it worth to upgrade the ship? Once again, I'll cover that in just a second, but... Um, just know the difference that an, a non-upgraded ship's max income per day is 61, a max upgraded ship's income is going to be 75. Um, now, obviously, it begs the question, what do you do with the commercial Nanaros? Um, so you're probably going to spend them all at Javert or the transposing guy that's outside. I forgot his name. Um, and with the Denaros, you can buy Sweetwater Equips. Um... You can buy the Sweetwater Tattoo, which is personally the worst out of the three. Uh, the Monocle, which is the best out of the three. And then the Sweetwater Pendant, which is somewhere in between. Ignore the earrings, this is a fake item. Um, and it kind of sucks. Um, and the reason why this sucks is obviously because we have Gollux, and Gollux earrings are superior in every way. No pun intended. Um, so... The reason why the monocle is the best is because it overtakes uh, the items like pap mark or um, black bean mark because you can transpose into this, uh, which I'll cover in just a second. Um, and the sweetwater pendant, you can transpose from a dominator pendant. Um, the reason why uh, sweetwater equips are so powerful is because of transposing. Um, their stats, as you can tell, alone are very, very lackluster. Um, it like the Sweetwater Monocle has pretty much stats that are just as good as the Aquatic Letter I accessory. But in terms of how you can enhance this monocle, makes it one of the best items in the game. Okay, so the only other remotely useful uh, NPC in San Comercy is Piet. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but basically, it has item upgrades under him. And this is where you use transposing. Now, the only two items that you want to transpose in Maple Story Reboot are the Papalatus Mark and the Dominator Pendant for very specific reasons. Um, it's basically to keep your four set of Gallux while also maximizing the amount of stats that you get from, you know, the extra stars, if you will, from uh, from Kamurchi. Um, so basically what transposing is, is you take a 140 item and you transfer the stats of that item into a sweet water item. So for example, if I have a 16 star Papalatus mark and I transpose it, it becomes a 15 star sweet water monocle, but I keep the stats from the 16 star of the Papalatus mark. I keep the flame of the Papalatus mark, and I can gain that 16 star worth of stats again. Um, so that's part of the reason why transposing is so powerful. Now transposing isn't something that just happens instantly, it's something that you need to try over and over and over again. Obviously they wouldn't make it easy, and it makes sense as to why, because it's extremely powerful. Um, so when you transpose, there's roughly a 3 to 5% chance that you actually can transpose into the item. Nothing happens if you fail, um, but every time you do try to t transpose, it consumes 10 denaro. So you can see that a lot of things in San Comerci or Comerci or whatever um, does consume a lot of denaros. 
So this is where the question of should I upgrade my ship comes into question. Um, because upgrading your ship also costs dinaros, but it's an investment for the future because if you're making an extra 14 dinaros a day, it starts to become more and more worth for every month that goes by because every 10 days, you're making an extra 140 dinaro. Extra month, you make an extra... Uh, an extra 420 dinaros, so on and so forth. Um, the first, there's two, so like I said, there's two upgrades for the ships. Um, each of them costs a certain amount of dinaro. I'll probably put it up on the screen here because I don't necessarily remember it. But um, yeah, um, personally, whether I, uh, personally, if you are starting Kamurchi, I think it's worth to go for the ship upgrade no matter what. So, Akhet from the future here. Now, the reason why I do suggest this ship upgrade, because I didn't explain it well in the in the first recording, is because in order to get high-starred Sweetwater items, on average, you're going to need multiple spares in order to make this happen. And considering that each Sweetwater pendant costs roughly 400 dinaros, this is going to mean that you're going to need at least a couple thousand dinaros. Um, in order to achieve your end goal of 21 or 22 stars. Um, also considering that transposing is hit or miss, it might cost you 600, 700 dinaros maybe to, you know, transpose an item successfully. Um, but yeah, it's something I personally suggest because it's always good to have more items just laying around because maybe you can use um, some Sweetwater items potentially as drop gear, right? And if you really want more damage going into those endgame regions like Arcus or maybe even Odium for when that comes out, having 21 or 22 star drop gear might be, uh, you know, prove, it might prove to be beneficial. Um, just keep doing Dolch until your ship levels up and, you know, you do get uh, what you're looking for. So I'll go on my main and I'll show exactly what a, you know, a transposed equip looks like. Um, in comparison to, you know, maybe other strong equips that can compare. So here I am on the main um, to showcase what a transposed equip looks like, for example. Um, so the Sweetwater Monocle is one of the transposed equips that I use because once again, it's the best of the three um, because there's nothing really that can take over the spot. And as you can tell, even though it's an eye accessory, which usually don't have a large amount of attack, you can see that this item has over 100 attack. And its flame is also really strong. Um, yeah. So... In, and like once again you compare this to a you know an item that isn't transposed and you can see that the stats are much weaker obviously this is 17 stars so it you know it might not compare in that regard but here's a transposed item at 17 stars at 29 attack and a non-transposed item at 17 stars you can just see the difference in the stats absolutely massive because even the flames roll a lot better when you transpose because obviously you're using boss equips rather than you know the sweet waters themselves which roll flames that are much much worse so now comes the ultimate question and after i've literally explained everything is kamurchi worth your time um and it's a very complicated and convoluted you know answer um but in my opinion I think for new players, um, generally Kamurchi is worth your time. I mean, the reason why I say this, I know, I know, all the sweaty endgame players are going to be like, no, it's cringe. Um, and the reason why I say this is because um, it's just a way to give yourself equips that can function in the early game for multiple purposes very quickly. Um, because Kamurchi equips... Um, only costs 250 dinaro, which usually only takes like a week's worth of like, you know, uh, dailies, which isn't too bad. And they can scale into the end game as you, you know, get more invested into the system. Now, for more experienced players, um, I think that Kamurchi obviously isn't worth because they can start using Dawn equips like Twilight Mark and other stuff like that when they start to, you know, trade higher level bosses like Hard Lucid, 
um, hard will and beyond, right? Um, so Dawn equips would, you know, otherwise replace these, um, you know, would replace the uh, Sweetwater equips and still replicate a majority of their power without having to spend the time every day just to run through the Kamurchi and, you know, get the Kamurchi equips all over again. Because when you do start a new character, you can't transfer Kamurchi Donaros and you have to go through the quest all over again. So for experienced players, no, I don't think it's worth. But for new players, I think it is a pretty good option. I don't think it's absolutely necessary, but I think it's good. I think it's worth your time because you can also turn the Kamurchi equips into solid drop rate gear. So for example, this Sweetwater tattoo, I can start without any safeguard in my current position, get it to like uh, 19 or like 21 stars and use it as drop gear, right? And it's very solid as drop gear without a large amount of investment because I don't have to safeguard it because I can get an infinite amount of replicas, um, you know, so on, so forth. Um, um, I would all, uh, okay. Also, I would also highly suggest, um, Kamurchi for any new player that gets a Dominator Pendant or a Papalatus Mark, um, early into the progression. If you get a Dominator Pendant or a Papalatus Mark early into your progression, I highly Highly, highly suggest that you do Kamurchi um, because it'll propel you into the later stage of the game without putting like too much effort in. Um, assuming that you do get the drops. If you do want to, once again, if you do want to skip on Kamurchi, I don't think it's, you know, the end of the world. It's not as optimal as it used to be, but um, yeah, I think that's my final verdict on Kamurchi. Um, it's still a relatively useful system and it has, you know, its pros and cons. Um, and I don't think that it's something that should be entirely neglected. Um, but I don't think it's, a, you know, something that should be respected as much as it used to be. Especially for experienced players because there are other items that can replace these Kamurchi items. So that'll be it. That's everything that you need to know about San Kamurchi. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Uh, but one last thing before I go. Um, I am considering about making a guild in MapleStory Reboots. So if you guys do want to see this guild come alive, please show all of your support in the comments down below. And leave a name for what you want the guild's name to be. I will only create this guild if there is enough support going around for the guild. So that'll be it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And as always, much love.